Hey, what's up, BC? It's a Saturday afternoon, not my normal Friday time. Uh, kind of neglected to make a video because I had some uh, some stuff coming in, in the mail, and I knew I was gonna go record shopping uh, probably on Friday or Saturday. But uh, at any rate, here I am now. I've got a good amount of stuff to show, so I'll just get right into it. This is uh, the only two. These are the only two 45s I picked up this week. Uh, Everyone has heard this song, I Want Candy by The Strange Loves on the classic uh, Bang Records label. Probably one of my favorite labels for uh, 45s. The B-side here is uh, It's About My Baby. Pretty solid B-side. Um, I also picked up a kind of beat-up copy of uh, Oh Pretty Woman by Roy Orbison and uh, The Candyman as his backing group. And uh, Yo Te Amo Mary or Maria, I can't see because it's got the uh, sticker on the label, which... I haven't peeled off because I'm scared of uh, ripping the label on the paper, the paper on the label. Uh, picked up these two from the Half Price Books. Upgrade copy for me, the Beach Boys Today. This one's in stereo, you know, the, the typical 60s reprocessed uh, electronic stereo. Not ideal, but uh, for now it, it, I had a mono copy that was super beat up. I really enjoyed this record uh, for an early Beach Boys album, it was pretty solid. It's got the um, it's got the early version of Help Me Rhonda before the uh, the re-recorded version that went number one. Uh, what else is on here? There's a cover of uh, Do You Want to Dance, which I don't think is a Beach Boys original original, but um, yeah, pretty solid uh, 60s pop record really from the Beach Boys. Can't go wrong with them. If you've been watching for a while, you know I'm a pretty big Beach Boys fan, and. Uh, also, if you've been watching for a while, you know I'm a pretty big fan of Traffic. I picked up a copy of Mr. Fantasy. This is a 74 uh, Canadian repress on Island Records. It's got, you know, the original UK artwork, gatefold. Um, I'll show the label. Oh, it's in one of those Unipack gatefolds, which I'm not crazy about, but uh, it is what it is. It's on this kind of uh, 70s Island label. And, uh, oh, I've got to re-glue the, uh, the cover here on the Unipack. Every single one of these Unipacks, you know, with the, the opening and the inside of the gatefold, every single one of them I've ever bought has had this bottom seam unglued, which is an easy fix, but still, it's uh, a little annoying. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I've had this record for a while, Mr. Fantasy, that is, that is I've had a, uh, a U.S. version which also I believe was a 70s repress, but it's got this uh, different cover. And between the two, between the two covers, uh, I think I actually enjoy the US version better. Something about it just screams more 60s psych to me. Um, the thing is, the sound quality on this version is less than stellar. I would even go so far as to say it sounds pretty bad. It's got a lot of that bad, um, not like echo, but it's, what's that weird effect that happens uh, Whenever uh, it's like a it's like a pre-echo, you can hear what's about to happen in the music. Like say it's a quiet moment, you can really, if you listen closely, hear like a big drum hit or something before it actually happens. I don't know what that phenomenon is, but that happens on this record. I have like one or two others with that same kind of phenomenon. So I just pulled that out to compare. If I can find an original original U.S. version with this cover, I'll pick that up. Because I actually, that's a few, one of the few albums that I enjoy uh, both album artwork uh, variations of. Then I went to Josie Records, picked up uh, four things. Three bucks, I've never seen this in person before. Not that it's super crazy rare or anything. I've just had bad luck finding it. This is the Beach Boys Sunflower. Uh, this album came out in 70, I want to say. Um, mostly the stuff that I know about it, not so much the music. Um, but the cover, um, in Brian Wilson's autobiography, there he is on the cover, which I believe is his, the girl he's holding is either his daughter or his niece or something, but, um, he talks about this photo session and how it kind of symbolizes his, uh, his place in the band at the time, how everyone's kind of, uh, you know, they look like they're, they're into it, they're focused and... Uh, kind of really at the top of their game and he's a little uh, unfocused and he 
he's not so much the center of the group anymore, even though he, he's kind of being propped up as such. I thought that was really interesting, so, you know, I had to pick that up for three bucks. Also, going into my, this is all dealing with my recent punk slash new wave kick. Um, this is pretty much straight up late 70s punk, The Dictators, uh, Blood Brothers. Uh, I wasn't expecting too much out of this record, because uh, I've, I've heard kind of mixed things about it. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this. Uh, the guitar work on here is really solid. I really enjoyed the track. Um, I think it was uh, Baby Let's Twist and Stay With Me is really good. Uh, I think I read that Springsteen has like some guest vocals on here somewhere. I forget which track. But yeah, really solid album. This is on the uh, Asylum label. I've had a copy of this one before. It was kind of beat up and so I sold it and I got a new copy this week. This is Devo, uh, Freedom of Choice. Obviously the big hit on here is Whip It, but uh, the rest of the album is really solid too. Pretty pretty cool new wave stuff. Uh, if you ignore their uh, kind of oddball image and uh, eccentricism, they're still a pretty solid band. Um, this is a Columbia House uh, record club version. Uh, not an original press, it's still just as good as it gets really in terms of quality. Um, last one here, I picked up a Joy Vision single. This is She's Lost Control with Atmosphere. Um, Atmosphere is one of my favorite Joy Division songs. I think most people would agree it's probably one of their best. Um, this is another one that my dad, you know, he has a complete uh, Joy Division singles collection or a pretty substantial singles collection and New Order as well. And he's had this one for a long time, you know. Uh, 45 RPM, 12 inch single. Um, it's worth it for atmosphere alone. So I have to pick this up, my own copy. Similar to this, I also picked up uh, a couple weeks ago, or even a few months ago, the uh, New Order's first single, um, which I'm blanking on right now, Ceremony. I love that song. It's, you know, it was written with, I think, by Ian Curtis with the rest of the band. It was like the last song they all wrote together. Um, so yeah, it sounds like Joy Division basically, but it's under the New Order name. Uh, from Amazon this week I ordered two records. One of them, uh, they sent two records, one of them was the wrong record, so I'm doing a return, which is kind of, you know, hassle-free. It is what it is. You know, they're sending me a replacement for free. Um, it was a little disappointing to, uh, to, to get the wrong record for them. I never had anything like that happen before, but, uh, you know, they're, they're making it right, so not really much to complain about. But the other record I got was uh, the Smashing Pumpkins' first album called Gish. Um, this is kind of, I think this is like a 2011 reissue. I've got I've got a similar one to this for the uh, Siamese Dream album. I think it's their second one. But this is along the same lines. Not really so much of a radio hit on here. But uh, still a solid 90s kind of grungy alternative album. Really super thick cardstock for the cover. Standard black vinyl. Love the pumpkins, even though Billy Corgan's kind of a jerk. Uh, and then today, I went to Half Price Books again because, uh, you know, I, that store is like 90 seconds away. Um, it was a little busy there, but I managed to find some cool stuff. They, they had restocked some stuff this week. I always kind of luck out with that. Uh, I've just cleaned these. This is uh, Harry Belafonte's famous album, Calypso. Um, everyone knows the song Deo. Uh, what are the other songs on here? Jamaica Farewell. Uh, pretty solid. Uh, I, it's considered like world music. Um, he... Just go listen to the song Deo. I mean, it's... Uh, it's on this uh, black RCA Victor label. This is a stereo repress, by the way. It's not an original, um, but it is super clean. Oh, and it has, uh, this is kind of a weird quirk about it. It has two side one labels, which the previous owner has marked this side one in a red marker, and this side one he left white. Um, and to clear up confusion, I guess for themselves, they, uh, on the cover, the back cover, they marked the track listing. Uh, the red side one is the real side one, and the white one is actually side two. So that was kind of a weird quirk about it. I've 
I've wanted a copy of this for a long time. They're always really cheap, so I wasn't gonna like order one online or anything. Uh, kind of similar to this one, Nancy and Lee. This is Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood. Um, pretty famous uh, songwriting couple slash uh, musicianship couple. Uh, this copy is, well, first of all, I've only seen like one copy of this and it was like super beat up and they wanted like 40 bucks for it, which I thought was ridiculous. You know, six bucks for this, super clean copy. Uh, vinyls, like, it looks unplayed. It's on the original reprise label. Um, super happy to have this. The big hit on here, You've Lost That Love and Feeling. I think, um, I think the song Sundown, Sundown is pretty famous too, but, uh, yeah, 60s, 60s pop, uh, gold right here, really. Lee Hazelwood is an amazing songwriter and guitarist, and, you know, Nancy has a, has a cool voice, and that kind of, uh, she was, like, kind of the original, uh, like, uh, she wasn't, like, a rock and roll star, but kind of, like, a, you know, old school rock star girl, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Aztec Camera's second album, uh, it's called Knife, um, let's say about this one, I haven't listened to this one yet, but I know Aztec Camera, uh, I know their record label very well, they're on Sire Records, pretty much everything from Sire through the mid to late 70s through the, uh, through the 80s is, is pretty good, they never really had a misstep with artists, you know, they had everyone from, like, Talking Heads and Ramones to like the Pretenders and Aztec Camera so yeah happy to have that. This is produced by uh, Mark Knopfler from uh, Dire Straits really famous guitarist and he turned to production after he uh, retired from uh, songwriting and stuff um, so yeah I'm interested to see how this sounds I, I hope it's uh, I hope it's jangly and has that kind of lightweight guitar sound to it that Knopfler is known for. Not that he played guitar on the album or anything. Okay, these last two are kind of bigger hits or heavy, heavier hitters than everything else I showed. I just picked these up today. Um, I haven't cleaned this cover yet, so it might look a little dirty. It also just might be a little beat up, but uh, I'm still happy to have it. This is the New York Dolls. Um, I don't think this album has a title. I think it's just self-titled New York Dolls. Um, pretty famous glam rock album, or, uh, so you might even go so far as to say proto-punk, um, proto-new wave, kind of in the same vein as, like, T-Rex or uh, Dave Bowie, kind of in that, you know, glam rock sound that was really famous at the time, the, in the early 70s. Original press, it's got the, uh, inner sleeve, and here's the record on this label. Pretty cool. Uh, I've never seen a copy of that before in person. Not that, again, not that it's super rare, but this is the first one I've seen, so I had to pick it up. And then this one I've absolutely never seen before in person. This is Howlin' Wolf's, I'll just read what the cover says. This is Howlin' Wolf's new album. He doesn't like it. He didn't like his electric guitar at first either. Um, you know, this just referred to as the Howlin' Wolf album. Uh, there he is on the back cover. He, uh, to say that he didn't like this album was kind of a, an understatement. To my, to my understanding, he was, uh, kind of, kind of pissed the entire recording session. He was making fun of the, uh, the studio guys with their, like, you know, their wah pedals and, uh, crazy effects on, on their electric guitar setups. And he, he basically thought the music really sucked and he was not so happy to be a, a part of this. Um, this is on this uh, Cadet Concept Series label, which I think was owned by Chess Records, which he put out all his famous uh, blues records on, on Chess. So uh, I guess his label just asked him, hey, do you want to do this album for us? We'll pay you. And he's like, well, I'm taking my money, but the album sucks. Um, really clean, clean copy. I'll show the label. It's on this uh, Cadet Concept label, like I said. I wouldn't go as far as to say it looked unplayed, but, you know, it was in nice shape. Good price. Definitely lower than they go for online. Happy to have this. I also need the uh, Muddy Waters 
uh, Electric Mud album from this same series. Because I hadn't heard this before I bought it, but I listened to this today and it's super solid. It's kind of psychedelic a little bit. It's referred to as psych rock, but it's, it's kind of just, um, it's, you know, his blues vocals. And I don't know if he plays guitar on this album or not, but uh, it's just his vocal over some some psychedelic kind of renditions of jazz or not jazz blues standards um you know they play like smokestack lightning and uh what else do they play smokestack lightning backdoor man red rooster uh moaning at midnight spoonful you know solid blues tracks like that i'm not a huge blues guy but um i am kind of into the electric blues like that and I would like to own some original Lightning Hopkins stuff, uh, you know, him being a, a Texas legend, guitar legend. Um, anyway, that's all I got this week. Uh, I think I'll, I say this every time, but I think I'll probably be slowing down on the record purchases. I mean, I, I saw all that stuff in the store, it's someone that I couldn't really pass up, but uh, I think hopefully if, uh, if everything goes according to plan, I'll be kind of avoiding stores for a while, but I, I still have a few things coming in the next couple weeks from pre-orders and you know my Amazon replacement which I'm keeping a surprise until it shows up um, you guys know the record it's not anything too crazy but uh, I'll save talking about it till then um, yeah that's all I got oh I've been drinking this uh, Austin East Ciders uh, blood orange flavored apple cider pretty good so uh, as they do in the in the VC cheers and I'll see you guys next time Peace.